Donna, and then Karen. Donna. You ask if we had any more thoughts about this, and we ran over two key figure, two key elements, and I'm sure you're going to get there, but. Carrie brought up about the differences in theology, and you have spirituality up there, and you talked about, there was a, um, a bullet point about young adults leading worship. Mm -hmm. So are mm -hmm. we going to get there? Because yes. I kind of think that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, you know, we're actually, we're coming, we're winding down on the presentation piece, and then we're going to have a little bit of open space and opportunity. I did want to just um, affirm if you delve into the re generational research, there actually are demarcations in young adulthood. Mm -hmm. So that's one piece I wanted to, to affirm. The other thing is that um, our, our, our congregational institutions, um, almost by definition, tend to be monocultural. We're all there for the same purpose, for the same reason. If you look around our congregations, you will see that the vast majority, the predom there are predominant groups. And, and that's sort of the nature of a religious institution. Um, and this is why, um, you know, African Americans tend to go to African American, predominantly African American institutions. And but there are always people on the margins. So we're we're whether it's what we're talking about uh, youth, young adults, we're, we're um, you know other people of other racial uh, people of you know, different races. We're, we're talking about bringing people in from the margins margins, and that's really the hardest work we do mm -hmm. in our congregations. That is the most challenging, the most difficult, because that predominant culture, they are, they've got the numbers, they've got the leadership, they hold, uh, they hold the power, um, and it's, it's difficult to break through. It's challenging to break through. Was there another comment? Well, I, I just wanted to emphasize about the logistics of child care and uh, hospitality to young families. Uh, I've seen a lot of congregations be very cranky about being helpful to young families. And we can't afford that. Yeah. 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 Um, it's, it's, you know, not every young adult has that issue, but for those who do, it can be an insurmountable barrier. Yeah. And likewise, special needs. And that's, yes. so that's, that's also yeah. part of that, the, the dominant group, yes. being outside the dominant group. One of the things that's frustrating for me, being a small denomination to, to start out with, um, it seems to me that we need to find ways to have more collaboration across congregations mm -hmm. on this kind of thing so that you can bring together enough critical mass in any given subgroup uh, within the young adult po population. Yeah. Yes. There may be more going on than I'm aware of in terms of cons for, for older young adults. And, yep. and, and, and so forth. But, and the other thing too is, is having some some help from the district or even nationally so that congregations can report when their youth are going to college or moving to a different locality, that that information can be funneled to congregations and used as a basis for contacting or you know or, or, or data for bringing people together across across in one region, say a data region or something like that. Um. I have a quick thought for the order. So one thing that, that came from that for me is, um, you know, in the Joseph Priestley District, there's um, areas that have a lot of churches in a you know, small mm -hmm. area. You know, there's a lot of choices of where you can go. And one of the things that I think is maybe worthwhile um, to encourage or just keep in mind is, you know, if you're at a congregation and you've got one young adult who comes regularly and they don't really fit with us, you know, the older young adults or vice versa, mm -hmm. and they're feeling undervalued, it's not the community wrong and your church is not really equipped to fix that just yet, you know, there might be another congregation three blocks away um, or wherever sure. that's better. <laughs> yeah, that fits them better, that has a strong young yeah. group and a young adult group. And you know, I think it's better to say, you know, well if we go here if you're not finding what you know a very polite way to go here if we're lacking and we're not really catching this for you. But it's an option. And you know, not feel bad about that. We're not trying to scrap all as many young adults as we can. It's not a competition. Mm -hmm. As long as they find the favor of the priest that matters to them, that's great. Who cares where they are? Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. I have two comments that I want to respond. Um, in regards to being cranky about um, 
childcare. I also I often find that I don't know how many of you saw the video for this um, this training today, but in the video, in one of the videos, um, the young adults assumed that the only reason that they were invited to this event by this invitation was specifically to them is so that they could babysit. And that's kind of a problem in our congregations. We automatically assume that if there's a young adult, then oh, obviously they, they're here to babysit for us. That's their role in our congregation. Um, and that's not really, that's not really true. We have gifts that we can bring to the table. Um, I also have a comment in regards to making connections um, to other congregations. We do have a program, it's called, Con it's called Connections. Um, and when we go over the resources later, um, uh, that'll be a resource that I will bring up. It's not used to its full advantage. It's um, DREs around the time of bridging, which happens in the late spring, um, get a, they have a list, they know who, um, who is bridging, who is going to college, who may just be bridging and not going to college, who may be going into the armed forces, who may be going um, into, um, just, just going straight into work. Um, but oftentimes with the responsibilities of other jobs and other tasks within the congregation, they may not have time to forward each individual name to the, to the congregation that's closest or to the group of congregations that's close. Um, and so this was kind of attempted to be fixed in Connect UU, which was a young adult web-based program where young adults could search for young adults in their area, congregations, campus groups. Um, but people got burnt out. The people who led it, these young adults who led it, mm -hmm. they took up the charge and they got burnt out. And so we have a new group of young adults, and we're taking up the charge. But the problem is, is we're not stepping up, stepping back, and bringing someone with us. And so that needs to happen. Young adults need to take these youth who are bridging and say, I do all of this leadership stuff in order to make these things happen. Would you like to learn how to, to continue that? So training the next generation so that these things don't have a gap in between. Just a quick time out. Does everybody understand the term bridging? Not exactly. Not exactly. Okay, sorry. Uh, I sometimes assume that everybody knows these terms and that's not fair. Um, bridging is a ceremony within the Unitarian Universalist faith that um, celebrates the transition between youth, youthhood, graduating high school, um, and moving on to young adulthood. It's usually transitioned by the end of high school, um, but obviously in our age ranges, from 13 to 19, there is some overlap between when people actually end high school and when people themselves self-identify as a young adult. So that bridging ceremony can occur um, at the congregational level. Um, it can occur at a camp in a conference center. It can also um, occur just within the cell. That's been a challenge that we've had because every year, and it's wonderful because we've been allowed to participate in the bridging ceremony. You know, we read a couple of lines, they come and walk across the stage. It's, it's, it's been nice. And then I remember one year we actually did an event shortly thereafter where we made sure that that the um, youth who had then become instantly young adults came. And of course, the issue was they hung out with their youth yeah. friends. And we were with our young adult friends at the same house. Oh, no. And, you know, and, and it was yeah. fine. It was, you know, at least we were, you know, but we, I was going to say that it was, there definitely is about just a little bit of a. Attention. And it's, and it's hard to, you know, I can't, I'm, I'm blaming them and I'm, I, blame, I blame myself as much as anybody else, but it's that there is a little gap there that's hard to explain. And in, 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 in an instant ceremony, you don't go from being right. to Exactly. <laughs> I, I imagine it's the older of the young adults who really, in their hearts, want to hang out with teenagers. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want my role in just like baby. It's like babysitting. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm 24. I don't want to be with the high school kids. Um, I, I agree. I agree. But I think I think I see it differently as a leader. I uh -huh. see that it is my role to share with you this knowledge and this experience because you're just taking the first steps into becoming a young adult. You don't know, you don't know how to do a lot of the stuff that is required of becoming a young adult. How to pay dues to the church, how to 
um, how to lead meetings, how to, um, how to do things that are required, how to balance a checkbook. You know, some of the basic things these teenagers don't know how to do. How to go to an interview, how to, how to make a resume. And these are things that older young adults can impart their wisdom onto youth. 